Welcome to Biology Required Practical 5, and a big thank you to Sven Wardle, who shot this video. It's got great quality lighting, and uh, thanks again for letting us use it. And the first thing you need to do is orientate the heart. So you've got the left side of the heart on the right, and the right side of the heart on the left, remembering you're talking about the heart as if it's your own heart. So what you're going to do is you're going to orientate it so that the coronary artery runs from the top right corner down to the bottom left corner. Remembering that the left chambers of the heart are much bigger than the right, and of course the ventricles are much bigger than the atria. Giving both sides a squeeze, you'll feel that the left side is actually got a much thicker, more robust wall than the right side. So what is required for your required practical is for you to know your way around the heart. This bit at the top here is the atria and it sits on top of the ventricles there. Now on this heart, you can see where the butcher has chopped across the top and this might very well be the case on your heart and it opens straight into the atria. Best way to navigate your way around the heart is to stick your finger in and see where it actually goes. Push your finger down, you'll go through the right atria into the right ventricle through the tricuspid valve and uh, as you squash the side of the wall of the heart you'll see your finger pushing against it. Exploring the left side of the heart if you stick your finger in the hole at the top there into the pulmonary vein uh, carrying oxygenated blood from the lungs back to the heart you can see the atria sitting on top of the ventricles and you can feel how thick the muscle wall is there it's not as thick as the left ventricle. Okay, and exploring the other blood vessel there at the top, if you stick your finger all the way through there, you'll end up pushing it into the right ventricle. So therefore, we're able to notice that that must be the pulmonary artery that will be carrying deoxygenated blood back to the lungs. Now, comparing that to this blood vessel here, which is still very much intact, and you can see the thick muscular wall of that, that is the aorta, that is your main blood vessel that's going to carry blood under high pressure around your body. So sticking your finger in that, you're going to end up pushing it, and you'll go right into the left ventricle there, and you can feel with your other finger how thick that muscular wall actually is. So before you um, dissect the heart, have a look at it from the outside, the gross structure, find your way around it, take some photographs, and then annotate those photographs and notice all the main features. So where will we make our first incision? Well, we're gonna go work parallel to the coronary artery and that will take us straight down the center of the left ventricle. Now, you're gonna to have to cut quite deep and um, you might take a couple of strokes with the scalpel as you open that up. So your incision is gonna start in the upper part of the ventricle and you're gonna work it down towards the apex. And as we move through this dissection, we get some really excellent shots. Here you can see the thickness of that muscle wall of the left ventricle and soon we'll compare it to the right side. I mean, it's truly quite thick and it also begins to expose some of the chordae tendine that hold the valve in place, that prevent the valve blowing back on itself when, of course, that right ventricle contracts and creates such high pressure um, and prevents the backflow of blood into the atria. Sticking the finger up there, you'll take it into the atria. And um, again, with your finger on the other side, you'll be able to feel that. And if you push it further a little bit more, you'll see it come out of the blood vessel at the top. This, of course, is in the opposite direction that blood normally flows, and sticking your finger at the top would show you where the pulmonary vein is, in other words, the oxygenated blood coming back from the lungs to the heart. And again, what are you doing? You're taking photographs so that you can annotate them later in your book. You're making observations, and from it you'll do a biological drawing, and you'll also relate it to diagrams of the heart that you've come across. So just by being able to stick your fingers through various blood vessels and through various chambers, you've been able to identify the different chambers and blood vessels of the heart. Opening up the right side of the heart, which has already been cut by the butcher, we can see straight away the difference in the thickness of the muscle wall. 
And here we can see Sven sticking his finger down through the uh, vena cava into the atria, which would then lead into the ventricles, and then putting his small finger up through um, the pulmonary artery there, which would then be on its way to the lungs. We're going to go back to the left side of the heart and continue the cut all the way through into the right atria. So continue to cut all the way up through the atria and we'll open that up and we'll be able to expose the bicuspid valve. And what a lovely shot this is as we open it up remove a couple of blood clots there, we can see all the chordae tendinae, the valve tendons that are holding that bicuspid valve in place. And they've got such tensile strength, as I mentioned before, you know, and the amount of pressure that's generated when that heart contracts, you can hold the whole heart just by one of those chordae tendinae, which gives you an idea of how strong it is. And there's the valve itself. Um, spreading right across there because of course we have actually opened that up what Sven then does is he follows the ventricle up with his little finger into the atria and then he's going to follow that up with a pair of scissors now what that opens up is the semilunar valve of the aorta and the semilunar valve has three cusps which you can see here and this is a really cool bit here and um, as Sven takes the needle and he identifies the three cusps that make up the semilunar valve and then he points out the holes behind there. The holes behind there, in fact they're slightly in the entrance of the aorta, these are tiny holes and they serve the coronary arteries. Remembering that the coronary arteries are the arteries that serve the heart muscle themselves. So they don't go outside the heart, they bury themselves deep into the wall of the cardiac muscle. We're going to do exactly the same thing on the right side of the heart. We're going to take the scissors and we're going to follow it up from the ventricle through the bicuspid valve into the atria. And taking the scissors further up, we're going to go up through the pulmonary artery and we can see the right semilunar valves there. And again, um, Sven highlights the cusps, the three cusps there. Um, that again withstand the pressure or changes of blood when the heart contracts. A lovely dissection there. I hope you had a heart that you were able to manipulate and cut in all the right places. I know in Saudi Arabia sometimes they have lots of odd cuts around the heart and sometimes it can be difficult to work with. Get photos and get them stuck in your book.